Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Disco Elysium. In the last episode we talked to this lovely merchant here, tried to buy some shoes, but we are currently looking for a drug ring here. Someone's using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients of drugs into Revishol. We're trying to find out who the lady driver is and where her lorry is. And the only lady we know is the crazy lady sitting on some boxes. I don't remember where though, which is a significant issue. Maybe if we carry on walking down this way, we'll see what we can find. Uh, hello, there's a random man here. Water lock out of order until Wednesday at 7.15 a.m. Uh, is it Tuesday today? So tomorrow? But a sign down. A crumpled billboard reading, Samaran Butter soaks in the canal. Two ugly lines mar the bright countenance of the blonde boy depicted. Should we try and do our visual calculus? 58%, let's try. Judging by the size of the impact and the parallel lines of burnt rubber, the cause was probably a motor vehicle. Oh, let's look at the crater. Side slip marks indicated that the vehicle was traveling up the crater at 35 kilometers an hour. Let's look at the roof of the shack. The black marks on the roof indicate that the vehicle vaulted from the crater to the roof of the shack. Look at the sloping metal roof panel. The panel served as a takeoff ramp. This is crazy. Who did this? Look at the broken posts. The vehicle soared through the air, hitting the billboard and upsetting the posts. Then it continued its flight, taking the billboard with it. Look at the sign. The sign broke the vehicle's fall into the canal. That seems mighty lucky. The Samarin Butter billboard still looks freshly painted, suggesting it took the plunge recently. How recently? Within the past 72 hours. Look at the opposite bank. Still speeding, the vehicle made a loop and vanished into the fog along the coast. What was the model of this phantom vehicle? There are two good candidates. The Caprice 40 and the Linear G22. Why the Caprice 40? It's about the right size. And the tire marks look like they came from the skinny tires frequently found on that motor carriage. The Caprice 40 is a very popular model with bank clerks, topping pie delivery drivers, secondary school teachers, cops, strippers dressed as cops, undressed strippers. <laughs> okay. Uh, why the Liena G22? Very sturdy but light motor carriage. More likely than most to survive that jump. The Liena G22 is not a particularly popular model due to its peculiar proportions, which the manufacturer's design team probably thought about for too long. Oh, uh, what now? You'd have to follow the tracks to be sure. Blink and leave. The lieutenant looks on, waiting for you to wrap up your analysis. Can I speak to Kim about this? Any theories about what happened here? Uh, it looks like somebody was in a real hurry. Uh, some top shelf shenanigans. I want to meet the driver and shake his hand. Reckless traffic hooliganism. Let's just say it looks like someone was in a real hurry. What kind of car do you think it was? I'm going to go with the Caprice 40. That's quite likely, from what I can tell. Uh, I have some ideas about who it might have been. Oh. <laughs> to be someone really cool and courageous. It was someone dangerous. Perhaps this is somehow connected to the murder. Go with that. The traffic hooliganism. I hope not. Fortunately, we are not traffic cops. Should we get back to the murder? Conceptualization challenge? Try to come up with a convincing explanation for the driver's actions. Let's try it. Jacob? IRW? Who is that? Is that the man we read about in the book ages ago? Somewhere in the depths of your alcohol adult soul, you find a few threads that you can weave into a story. This could have only been... Pause dramatically. Jacob? Uru? The tip-top tourney champion? After the untimely death of dear friend and fellow racer Alfie Delatraz at Fjordhammer, Jacob Ewer was 
desperately chasing death on the racetrack, but death eluded him. The lieutenant patiently listens to the words coming from your mouth. After quitting in frustration, he became a recluse, a ghost driver searching for death on the streets of Revachol, speeding. Jumping canals at night? If I was Jacob Irv, I wouldn't drive in Martinez. The roads are awful. Shut down. <laughs> in conclusion, it's a colorful theory, but I don't believe Jacob Irv did this. Should we go? We really need to find this Jacob before tragedy strikes. Let's take the task. Why not? Let's add it to the list of other tasks. <sighs> if we must. I'm not expecting him to get far with this. The lieutenant consoles himself. Brilliant. So it looks like we can't actually go this way because, well, the bridge is closed and the the lock is full. So, where was that lady? She must have been... It can't be down here. She must. I must have to go round. I still need to go to Frit to cash in my check. Hang on a minute. I'm going to go to Frit to cash in my check. Mostly because it's on the way. Hello, racist lorry driver. Here we go. I can also hand in all my bottles. Hang on, let's do that first. Money, let's go. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Let's insert my bottles. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Let's go. I made like one. <laughs> Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. He puts down the magazine. I need to exchange this novelty check for cash. Give her the novelty check and gain 25 real. Uh, wow. I didn't know you worked for the union, sir. She rolls up the giant novelty check. Looks like she's seen it before and slips it under the counter. Anything else I can do for you? No, you don't work for the union. The union works for you by supplying you with cash. Thanks, Rhetoric. You got my back. All right. Now I've got that out of the way. I think that... Has that finished a task here? No, it has not. Okay. Mm, we still need to... We need to wait till tomorrow till we can talk to the smoker on the balcony. I'm just trying to find as much stuff as I can before the day ends. We're at four o'clock. Where's this lady? Where are you, my dear? I knew you were around here somewhere. There she is. Are you a drug smuggler? The woman still has her eyes fixed on the photograph in her hands. In the background, the radio plays. Snap your fingers in front of her face. It's the only thing we have left to do. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Snap your fingers twice. Where am I? Who are you? Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis, you've jolted her back to reality. The smile on her face has disappeared, replaced by the weary aspect of a cornered beast. Um, let's go with... I was actually hoping you could tell me that. Uh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. She adds with contempt. Wait, what's so bad about the 50s? The men have these small jewels and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? Uh, when else would you be then? Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution. The side walls and cafes are filled with the young people. I was on my way to see a new Goyadero picture starring Gabriel Buendero. Until you came along, that is. The look she gives you is accusatory. Who's Gabriel? This is Gabriel Buenguerro. He shows you the photograph in the lavish amber frame. Let's have a look. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick. And his jaw, the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. This man's got a hold over her. Even 50 years later, you can feel it. 
He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen. And schoolboys used to memorize all of his lines. She leans back, savoring the world she's conjured up. In all likelihood, it's a world that's only ever existed in her mind. Though I take it you were in Mesk when you were young. Someone was. She nods as though her meaning were perfectly clear. As someone? Are these not your memories? They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? Okay, this is... this has gone strange. They are beautiful. That is all that matters. Beautiful and true. And they will win. They are coming for this, you know? All of this. She seems to derive some bitter pleasure from this strange thought. As if the past will one day wipe the present away. Like a tidal wave approaching. Sorry to interrupt your dreaming there? I wasn't dreaming. I was there, Loman. It was early spring, and the mine behind the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. Her eyes narrow, and she appears to take your measure. While well, you, people, were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution, in Mesk, it was a golden age. The Republic of Mesk is a massive confederation on the Isola of Muindi, the world's largest state by territory. It's a petro-state, a constitutional monarchy, and, as of recently, an outcast due to its tilt to the far right. Oh dear. Okay, well, right, I have some other questions for you. Police questions. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. She settles back against the railing of her motor lorry. Behind her, mountains of memorabilia, photos and knickknacks line the dashboard. There's something off about this woman. Tell her to show you the soles of her boots. Maybe she was at the hanging somehow. Really, Inland Empire? Are you THE Lady Driver? Do I just go straight in with this show me the soles of your boots? Now what do you want with an old woman's boots, Sheriff? It's for important police business, ma'am, or... Yeah, okay. Let's go with... Ah, oh, please help me out here, it's important. Please? I think you should let me get back to Gabriel Buenguerro. You are not Gabriel. Gabriel doesn't say please. She's wearing sturdy workers' boots made of black leather. Buckles run across. The sole is also made of leather. Now the other one, please. Just before Gabriel, it was the coronation of Franco Negro. Now, there was a real man. There is no abrasion in the pattern that you can see. She puts down her foot. Moreover, the boots were size 37, tiny. There are too many discrepancies in all this. Another discrepancy although not boot-related, is the coronation of His Innocence Franco Negro, which happened 500 years ago. Wait, what do you mean? It was the coronation of Fran Caniero? It was. And then it was no more. And I was no longer holding my father's hand. He was no longer descending the stairs in Ryle. The crowd had gone silent. Perhaps it was another Harife who came and woke me up, looking at my boots, asking questions. Or uh, perhaps it was one of the others in this carnival. I don't remember. As she says carnival, she gestures to the empty square with the statue and the machines. She is not odd soul. These are not the boots that made the prince. I could have told you that from just looking at them. The size is 37. Thanks, Kim. The feet of a little girl. They fit well on the pedals. Okay, what are you hauling? Diamonds. Diamonds, really? Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Hmm, it would be pretty marvelous. Okay, but what are you really hauling? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. But you don't know what you're hauling in your own lorry? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. What if the cargo is contraband? Then it's contraband, Loman. 
What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like Bad Han Hermenegildo. Bad Han? Hermenegildos' bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. Good lord. 300 people? Hmm, okay, I still don't really understand this whole Boledero thing. Of course not. To truly understand the Boyadero, you need to listen to on the Western Plain. The Boyadero, Boya for short, is a cow herder from upstream Magritte, the great steppes of northern Mesk. People like Manana at the gates have turned it into an ideology of sorts. Okay, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring boy Adairo. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the western plain. I'm guessing that doesn't happen. Of course not. The Boyadero returns from the western plain a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Madrid, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. In the background, you can hear the orchestra swell as the screen fills with the maiden's imploring eyes. I think I can see where this is going. So the boy Adair strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magrit. Then he rides off, because the western plain is calling to him. Uh, that's, that's not where I thought this was going. You have to understand. A true boy Adair needs a whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boyadero. What if to truly love a boyadero is to float lifeless downstream? All right. Are you the lady driver? Did you just call me a lady, Herife? I did. She clearly doesn't think she's a lady. Don't repeat it. I was told of a woman driver, and you're the only woman here. I'm not that either, Herife. I've gone too far from it all to remember what was between my legs. It doesn't work like that on the long haul. So you're not the driver everyone is terrified of? I'm only terrifying to small children and to those who used to know me. But who is the lady driver I'm looking for? Damn. Yeah, it's not her. Believe me. Okay. Then who is the female driver I was told of? How should I know? Do I look like I spend a lot of time with the other camioners sniffing around when I have my movies to go to? Uh, why are you scary to the people who used to know you? Because they can no longer recognize the person I once was. You said long haul? That's... The big ones, the trucks. There's no women and men there, it's all just... He hums along, as if to a track on repeat. In the middle of this town, there's a ghostly motorway. It takes all the people where they want to stay. In the background, a quiet song seeps from her cabin into the air. You don't hear any vocals. All I needed to know. Thanks. Oh, Sim. Before I came, you seemed... away. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. So he doesn't think she's the lady driver? You hear that, old man? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Hmm. Wait, why is that, Lieutenant? Or should you drive a lorry if you get like that? Let's go with that one. Should you drive a lorry if you get like that? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best camioners around. I drive routes no one else will. What routes? Lomonosov's Land, Udashnaya Zemlya, the Western Plain. She nods and closes her eyes again, letting her mind submerge. The Transcatalia Magistral. You for one A. At the Stradas do Mirador. All the good ones. The deep trenches. Where the bluebirds fly. Cool, right until your dust, sister? Sure, let's go with that one. Irmao. I already am dust. You seem like a woman who knows a thing or two about drugs. What do I need drugs for, Loman? What I see, what I feel, the great adversary, no drugs can compare. Where could I get my hands on an experience like that? Now that's not really what I was getting at. Then what were you getting at? This line of questioning is going nowhere. Try harder. 
Try harder. Maybe uh, she thought you're corrupt. Everart sent me. Place a finger on the side of your nose and tap twice. Oh, God. Let's try it. Who the fuck is Everart? The Union boss? Ah, and what do I care about the Union boss? He's no Gabriel. He's no Franco Negro. He's no even Herman Aguildo the Hound. Okay. L let me put this another way. Are you smuggling drugs through Terminal B? Maybe. Probably not. Makes no difference to me either way. You said earlier you don't know what cargo you're hauling. Could it be drugs? Just this month, I made half of those in trips from Saramiris to Grad. The u one a What do you think they take from Saramiris to Grad, Loman? Drugs? No. Loman. Diamonds. Uh, okay. If you had a guess, who do you think is smuggling drugs around here? Easy. He's the skinny man who thinks he's a poet. Never trust a poet. Also, he's the only one I can see from here. Oh, god damn it. So the skinny man who thinks he's a poet? So that's the, the man who was on drugs, right? That's correct. There is no visibility of any of the others. Mm. I didn't ask you about diamonds, did I? I don't care about Diamonds them. are good for you, Loman. You should try them sometime. Make yourself pretty like Eva de Zoras. I mean, I can't deny making yourself pretty seems like a great idea, but okay. If you're not involved with the drug trafficking, then why are you still waiting here? Where do you want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music or the seagulls. Look at all the colors and the futures of this world. It's a good palette cleanser, this jamboree. Or I can just relax and let my mind carry me back where it will, to the Great Plains. I think we're done here, no? He closes his notebook. Stress it. Uh, thank you for now. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesky. A voice trails off. Damn. I don't have any ideas. Tall, skinny one. She can see. Wait, who can she see from there? Surely she can't see the other guy from there. I guess if she looked through there, maybe? we get around there? Yeah, that guy. Oh, we can walk across these crates, huh? Well, we learn something new every day. Let's talk to this guy again. Maybe we've unlocked more dialogue. Saying that lady over there accuses you of smuggling drugs. Still here. Stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? I heard that one of the drivers is a woman, but I don't think she's here. Do you know this lady driver? I don't want to talk about that. He shifts around, suddenly uncomfortable, and then looks away. Why? Do you know something? What is it? Man, I was hoping it isn't going to be her. All I can say is, she isn't around here anymore. She isn't some evil drug trafficker, and I don't know where she is. I asked you who was conducting the drug trade. You said you didn't know. Now you're saying you do? I didn't, man. I told you I was hoping it's not her. That she wouldn't be mixed up in it. He still is. Hoping. It's just wishful thinking on his part. Not trickery. It's true. We would have caught a lie. But a kind heart is tricky. It is indeed. Bah. Emotional rhetoric. He knew something and he didn't share it with you. That's a fact. Who is this person? What's her name? Thank God I don't know. People here call her the Lady Driver. She kept her name a secret. From me too. Now I see why. Who is she to you? A friend? An acquaintance. I don't know. She was the only person in this damn jam I could talk to. She's someone I don't want to rat out to the law, okay? What does she look like? <laughs> a youngish woman. Gruff, but in a cool way. That really doesn't narrow it down. Mm. What could our hair? Blue and violet. Died. It was violet when she got here. Blue before she went. Wait, whoa. I haven't seen anyone with blue and violet, violet hair. I feel like I'd remember that. Then she may have dyed it again. Oh, so she could have changed her hair color again? When did she leave? Damn, I don't want to... Please just let it go. Whatever she did, it can't be that bad. She's not a bad person, I know that much. We can't just let it go. It's part of a police investigation. 
That's how it always is with you, isn't it? All part of the investigation. The girl's troubled. If you hunt her down, she may not survive it. I can't have that on my conscience. It won't come to that. We won't pursue her on this. This is information only. I don't believe you. You said she's troubled. Al. She's got the darkness in her. That young person's darkness when you think it's all over. And you're looking for a way out. She shared this with you? Yes. Which is why I don't want to snitch on her. I was told everyone's afraid of her. You're not? I heard the rumors. I saw the other drivers looking at me strange when we talked. And she told me too. That she's had a violent life. But I wasn't afraid of her. More like for her. Did this violent life include drug trafficking? Well... It looks like it did now. But we didn't talk about that. We talked about life, you know? She talked about her mind. Hold on, her mind? The way it worked. The trouble it was giving her. When she left, did she leave her lolly behind? Fuck, man. Go grill someone else with these questions, okay? There are plenty of drivers here who couldn't stand her, or were afraid of her. They'd be more than happy to rat her out. Yeah, but I've kind of pissed a lot of them off. He's right. There are other options. The race man, for one. Ah, oh, not him. Wait, this guy says they're friends. Then, acquaintances. And he's okay with others ratting her out. Push Tommy and it will break his heart. And his spirit. Don't expect you to be pals. Do I care about not being friends with this man? Hmm. <laughs> so you're alright with others ratting her out? You just don't want your hands to be dirty? Uh, put yourself in my shoes. I need this for another investigation too. It's important. I can't blow it. Uh, she's a suspect, and I need you to tell me where she is, or I can't finish the investigation Force Tommy. Fine, I'll drop the matter for now, find another way. Let's go with this one, so you're right with the others ratting around. Fine. I don't want to be a butcher. And I don't want to be a knight either. I just want to be a person who can sleep at night. A little fame wouldn't hurt too. Well, screw it. She's a suspect, and I need you to tell me where, where she is. Oh, she, mm, let's find another way first. Let's go see if we can talk to the race guy. I don't mind pissing that guy off. Thank you, friend. <sighs> wow, this makes me feel like I should pick up smoking again. Would help with my rhymes, too. All I need for now, bye. I can come back to him. Let's go speak to the... Race man. <laughs> the racist lorry driver. I don't mind breaking this guy. Looking for something odd? Come to tell me to fuck off again? I know you've been giving me the runaround. Fess up. Where's the lady driver? I don't know what you're talking about. First, you knew Selene didn't do it. Then why are you smirking? Or just tell me which one's her lorry. Let's go with... First, you knew Selene didn't do it. He did something. He stole his employer's goods and another lorry man's job. He should be thankful for the tip. He grins. A wide smile. He's been expecting this. He's really puffed himself up. Then, uh, why are you smirking? Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. You cops don't run Evachel West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. Actually, we do. <laughs> Just tell me where the, who the goddamn lady driver is. You all bark and no bite. The real dogs are up in Jamrock. Everyone knows that. You mean la puta madre? A legendary, and not in a good way, crime boss from Jamrock controls what is probably the most powerful organized crime outfit in Revachol West. Looks like the lieutenant has a plan. Let him do this. Oh, please, Kim, show this man. <laughs> yeah, him. Cross your arms and nod. Then I presume you are familiar with his peonies. Yeah, they're his little bitches. He's got them all over the unions. Not just the unions. He has peonies everywhere. Some say he even has them in the RCM. Dirty fucking peonies who do anything for him. Multi-ethnic drug addicts. The lieutenant adopts a rodentine quality. Be cool, sire. He's getting into this. Let's go. Say nothing. You're not peonies. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. No, of course not. We are not peonies. 
But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peonist job to find out who that is. He's surprisingly good at this. Not bad at all. Look at him lurching. It's not a hard job. It won't take a long time. It won't make Padre Madre angry. But a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way, protecting this fucking thief. I'm not scared of you or the mob. I'm under the protection of the Loriman and Carter's guild. You've seen that corpse in the ceramic armor there. Did his shitty little guild protect him? Nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you... He tries to light a fresh cigarette, but his hands are shaking now. The sentence simply ends. The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. I've softened him up as best I could. Now it's on you to finish the job. Ah, oh, I got an 8% chance. Oh my god. Is that because I told him to go fuck himself? Ah. <laughs> I can't change my gear, can I? Can I come back to this? Wait. Wait. Half light. I have stuff for half light, right? I have gloves. Anything else for half light? Physical instrument? Shivers, electrochemistry, that's minus half light, that doesn't help me very much. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try this, maybe we'll get lucky. I wonder if putting... Hmm, I don't think it'll matter, but I'm going to put something on that's got phys physical instrument on it and see if it Looking does anything. Something, Come to tell no. me to fuck off again? 17% chance, cross your fingers. The main thing is to not overdo it, even when you're trying to scare someone. The most important thing is, how does it look on your resume? Hmm. Why don't you and me step outside for a little talk? What? What do you think we're doing right now, runt? We're outside talking. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Funny you should bring that. Ah, oh, shit. Um, no, he does raise a valid point there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Damn it, I meant... <sighs> Do you want to find somewhere private to... Ah, oh, no, shit. There's some kind of homo thing. Ah, uh, maybe it is. Uh, of course not. Just, just tell me what you know. Actually, should we just go with maybe it is? I mean, but that's scaring more. Let's do that. Okay, that's enough, detective. That's enough. Let's just go and ask Tommy, all right? We are wasting our time here. So who's Tommy? Go and ask Tommy. Who's Tommy? I feel like I should know who Tommy is. We're done now. On the other hand, that didn't change anything, did it? Uh, should I put on the... That top? Also, I think I'm going to go with suggestion over conceptualization. There we go. Oh, and I should change my gloves back because I tend to need interfacing more than anything else. Okay, well. This hasn't really helped me all that much, but I think I'm going to end this episode here. We shall carry on with this investigation in the next episode. So thank you all very much for being here. Please like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.